Hey everybody, Ted Forbes here from The Art of Photography. This is not a regular episode, this is another vlog edition. And uh, anyway, a couple things I wanna talk about, and I will make a regular episode about this because uh, a couple cool things that came across uh, my desk today. First of all, um, we're talking about bags, uh, photography bags and camera bags, and I travel a lot actually. And one of the challenges that I've had recently is, it kind of was a little bit of a scary incident because I, I was a, it was a short trip, traveling light, Coming back, flight delays the whole nine yards, the flight's full. And uh, the stewardess comes up and I'm pretty much made to check my bag, which was not in a, uh, in a case that I trusted <laughs> to not have broken gear when I got back. Everything was fine, um, but I did not rest easy for the three hour flight and um, needless to say. And so, you know, I can't do anything about TSA, obviously. Um, they're, they're their own deal and you're not gonna beat them, so you've gotta join them. And one of the things I've been looking for, I've had an email exchange recently with a guy, Robert, who watches the podcast and he had some questions and I mentioned something, I don't know how we got into it. Uh, but there's a company called Think Tank and they make some really interesting stuff, um, pretty unique. I've used a lot of bags before that I really liked. Um, my favorite bag, they actually quit making, but uh, Lowepro. Uh, made a bag called the Nova 5, which was, for whatever reason, it was big enough but not too big, and I've got one. It's not really a good travel bag uh, unless you can carry it on, but it does fit. Um, you're not going to get a lot of flack from I had stuff in a, in a suitcase that was rather soft was my problem. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, if you're trying to travel light and you're trying to put clothes and everything in the same bag, Think Tank have some options on there that I'm thinking about looking at. And I went to their website and checked it out and they've got a lot of really cool looking stuff. And I want to try a couple of their bags and, um, you know, really interesting stuff and highly recommended. This guy, Robert, that I was emailing back and forth with, you know, he was like, yeah, I totally love them. They're great. Uh, and I don't know, some of you may have had experience with Think Tank, but uh, the cool thing is this Think Tank actually sent me an email and uh, you know uh, we we've talked about partnering on some stuff, and and I'm not really crazy about that idea unless it's a product that I've tried and you know feel comfortable recommending. However, this is a little bit different deal. Uh, they sent me a deal, and they were willing to view uh, make an offer to viewers on here um, for uh, a test drive, and they make some sling bags, and one of them is called the Slingomatic, and there's three sizes of this. And basically, what the deal is, and I thought this might be beneficial if anybody was wanting to try it. Um, uh, you'll basically any order that you have over fifty dollars, they'll throw in a free gift. I don't know what that is, uh, but hey, you know something for nothing and, and too bad of a deal. But the better deal in here is that you can order a Slingomatic and you can test drive it free for thirty days. So this is kind of nice if you live in a neighborhood or, an, or neighborhood in an area or a city where you don't have a physical camera store that has think tank that you can go check out uh so what you can do is you know um you know commitment free for 30 days this offer runs from now until the end of august of this year uh if you're watching this video uh late this is 2012. um so anyway you can try it and i'll give you a link on that if you want to uh try that as an offer i'm probably going to do it myself uh, because, you know, if you don't like it, you send it back. And uh, the link on that that I will give you is, uh, I will put it, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see it in the, um, I'll put a link here. Uh, but the link is theartofphotography.tv, which is my website, theartofphotography.tv slash sling bag. And like I said, you'll see a, a link right here that you can click on. So if you click on that link, uh, you know, you can, you can try one of these bags out for 30 days. Um, see whether you like it or not. If you like it, you can buy it. If not, then, uh, you know, no commitment. Uh, so pretty good deal. Um, there aren't a lot of companies that are willing to do something mail order like that, which I think is kind of cool. So anyway, um, so click on the link if you're interested in that and check it out. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'll probably uh, go ahead and try the 30-day the, the test drive on the sling bag, but they've also got some airport bags and some stuff that are pretty cool. And I do have a code for that too if you want to do the, uh, it's the free gift thing, any order over $50. I don't know what the free gift is, but uh, the link on that is just theartofphotography.tv slash think tank and that'll uh, that'll give you the info you need to set it up and I'll put that link here too. So the sling bag is the is the 30 day trial on, on any of the sling bags and like I said there's three models of them. They look really cool um, and you know I'm going to check out Think Tank. If you guys have had experience with Think Tank uh, you know leave a comment below because uh, you know other readers will see that and uh, you know you can say if you like them or not. I've heard really nothing but good things so I'm really interested in, in trying one out. Um, anyway, so that's it for bags. Uh, the second thing I'm going to move on to, it's it for bags for now. Um, <laughs> I will report back because uh, traveling on an airline with camera gear, um, I, I haven't found a perfect way to do that. I'm, I'm real funny about it because when I'm in an airport, 
uh, when I'm traveling, I, I don't like to carry a ton of bags with me. I just don't like to fool with it. I try to travel as minimally as possible, and that's just me. I don't want to mess around in the hotel room and have to pack it all back when I leave, so I take as, as little as possible, and, and it's hard when you're taking photography gear. Um, anyway, moving on from bags, the other thing I wanted to talk about today, we're going to do a little show and tell. Uh, somebody had asked in one of the recent vlogs, uh, you know, maybe a good idea would be to, uh, you know, show some of the camera collection, things like that. And is you guys who watch the show and follow the the, um, the vlog and all that stuff know uh, that, uh, you know, I, I'm really not into camera reviews on recent stuff. I mean, there's plenty of places you guys can find it. There's plenty of podcasts. There's plenty of YouTube videos. Uh, if you want camera reviews on something that's, you know, a newer digital camera that's come out. But what I think it's kind of cool is to show you some of my favorite cameras that, that are antiques that, that you can find, uh, certainly through channels like eBay and things like that. Um, but uh, the one I wanted to show you today, this is, this is a, what's typically known as a folder camera. And this one is, it, this is really one of my favorite cameras. Uh, this is an old Voigtlander. And don't get confused because Voigtlander, um, there's a company that bought the name Voigtlander and they're making cameras now and they're making range finders and they're, they're 35 millimeter cameras. And they're making some very cool stuff. They're owned by Cosina in Japan, I believe. And this isn't that kind of Voigtlander. This is an old antique real deal Voigtlander. And to make matters even more confusing, the new range finder 35 millimeter cameras are also the BESSA series, B-E-S-S-A. Um, and this is an old, this is one of the original Voigtlander Besses. And it, it, it's an amazing camera. If you've seen, um, well, you'll see it in a second. It, it folds up, which is the whole idea here behind a folder camera. But it takes medium format film. It's all mechanical. It's completely manual. There's no meter in here. So it's, it slows you down a little bit. But the photos that it takes are just simply gorgeous. Sharp as attack. Um, the, uh, when, when you're using low, shallow depth of field, the out of focus areas are, are really beautiful. Um, I don't really like the word bokeh and I'll explain that in another episode. But anyway, if you're into that kind of thing, um, it, it really is cool. Uh, these were made, I think this was a late 1930s model and I happened to find one that was in super fantastic condition. I actually bought it off of eBay. Uh, didn't pay too much for it. I mean, I think the most you'd pay for one of these is maybe a couple hundred dollars if it's one of the, the nicer ones. And I'll talk about some of the differences in these in a minute. Mine isn't one of the completely nicer models. But anyway, it takes um, uh, medium format film, so 120 film, still easy to get. Uh, and the cool thing about it is uh, that it shoots uh, six by nine is the size. So a lot of medium format films today you either shoot square photos, six by six, or sometimes six by seven, which are slightly rectangular. This one's a full six by nine. So it's, it, it, it sort of looks like 35 millimeter, but the fact that it's got just a really nice lens on it and the fact that it's such a big negative, you really get some beautiful photos. So if you want to enlarge them really big, this is a great camera to use for stuff like that. Um, it does have a range finder in it. And it's kind of weird because there's actually, you can kind of see on the back, there's, there's basically one, two places, two viewfinders on here. One is for composing. This is an early camera, so there's not a lot of convenience. One of these is for composing the shot, and the other one is for focusing. And I'd like to do uh, an art of photography podcast on here and find a way to like just visually show how a rangefinder focuses. It uses two lens lenses on the on the front. You can see a taking lens and a viewing lens, and uh, it, actually they're over here, the ones for the light meter. And basically, what it does is it, it superimposes a secondary image on top of the f image you're looking at, and it's usually slightly tinted color. And what you do is to focus, you you turn the knob until they line up and that on whatever you're focusing on. And it's a really early focusing system and, and that's how rangefinder cameras work. So um, if you were to buy a Leica or something like that, that's, that's the same focusing mechanism they use. It's not through the lens focusing, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but I'll go ahead and open this up so you can see. Uh, these typically are known as folder cameras and when you unfold it, folds out like that and it has a bellows system. And what this is really is just a little tiny mini um, a large format camera you know it, it's it's very similar you have everything is built into the lens all the mechanics um, the shutter everything is up here the shutter is not back in the back uh, uses a leaf shutter it's spring operated and I don't know how much of this you'll be able to see on the front but basically um, I, I have a you can turn the front dial to select your exposure time I'm gonna pull this up real close and maybe it'll all focus on it I don't know no nope. it's kind of blurry but anyway these are your digits right here for for focusing there we go and uh, excuse me, not focusing for, for the uh, shutter time. And then also you have, uh, it's over on the side here. You can see the numbers there on the little switch. Let me get it from my face, it'll focus up on it. 
uh, the numbers in the switch and basically that's how you set your aperture and you can actually visu visually see the aperture being changed so again it's going to be a little bit slower experience um, than uh, you know shooting on a modern camera obviously uh, when you're ready to take the picture you simply I'm going to go ahead this is set to time let's set it to hundredth of a second anyway you cock the shutter by pulling this over and it's and it's set it didn't come back and then the shutter release is actually on the bottom of the camera right there so you would compose your subject cock the shutter set your time set your aperture and when you're ready to go you're done and it takes a picture and then you physically have to wind the uh there's a little dial on the bottom and you physically have to wind the film you'll see some numbers show up in these red parts so it's kind of like shooting on a holga but with a real nice lens <laughs> with controls of, of aperture and shutter speed I really shouldn't say it's like shooting on a Holger because it's really not. The image quality is completely different. Um, there are some variances in the lenses on these, and I can't remember which lens this is. It probably says on here. Uh, yeah, this is a Scopar, and I can't remember offhand. I should have done some research on this. When I do this for the actual podcast, I'll do the, the research. But um, it basically has to deal with how many lens elements you have. Um, but honestly the the one that's the real fancy one there's three types of lenses there's kind of a cheapo a middle ground and then a really nice one they all take wonderful pictures this is the middle ground that i've got i believe the scope are um and and like i said it's very confusing because the company that bought the name to voigtlander that makes cameras today uses all these terms the scope are is still used in their lens um the voigtlander bessa is a model and it, it while I appreciate the classic nature of that, it, it's, I think, poor form because it, it just really is confusing as to, to what the original camera was like. Um, it, you, you've seen this camera before if you follow me on Twitter or something like that because I, I kind of use this for my avatar. There's a, a shot of me focusing through this that my friend Wade took. And this is the actual camera. And like I said, this is one of my favorite cameras. I, I seem to remember, and I'm, I'm sorry I didn't do a little more prep on this, but it's the vlog, right? So we're supposed to be off the cuff. Uh, I believe this is a 1939 model. The other cool thing is it's got a little kickstand on the on the uh, front protector here, so you can actually open that up and set it down. And it has a yeah, it has a little hole there for using a cable release. So you could actually, uh, it's got tripod mount. You could mount it on a desk, something like that. Um, very cool, very kitschy, very interesting. The focusing dials up here, and when you focus, I don't know if you can see this. It, it physically moves the bellows out. You see it move out, and then you bring it back in. So it's like completely mechanical. Everything you see is 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 what's happening. And uh, if you are a fan of vintage cameras and kind of an antique look, um, these are really cool. And they're not just an antique look. I mean, th th these will shoot really sharp, crystal clear, modern photos. Um, I will, when I'm done editing and putting this together, I will put a link in here so you can you can see some examples of this, maybe on Flickr or something that I've done. Uh, but it, this is a ton of fun to shoot with. This is the the inside of the camera where you load your film. You've got a taking spool and a receiving spool. And uh, it's just, uh, I really uh, can't say enough cool stuff about this camera. You know, it's not as, as hip or cool as like a Hasselblad or something, but I mean, the image quality on here is pretty dang close. It's, it's amazing. And it, it's cool. And the other cool thing that I like about it is that for the most part, there's a release there under the lens. So you pop that down and it all folds back down. It's relatively compact. You're not gonna fit this in a shirt pocket, but you could certainly slide it into your pant pocket if you wanted to do something like that. Anyway, it's, it's really easy to carry around. Uh, these originally came with the, you know, the little letter, leather. Um, they called them an ever ready case. I call them never ready because they really, I mean, I have one over there that I, I store it in when I'm not using it. Uh, but anyway, range finder, uh, completely mechanical and, and I mean, just such a highlight. They're, they're, like I said, there's three models of this camera depending on the lens. And then later on, Voigtlander, um, actually made some variants on this. So there's a BESA 2 and a BESA 1. This is the BESA with no number. It's the earliest one. Uh, a little harder to find those in good condition, but if you're patient and you look around, you certainly can. And I will find a link to it and I'll put it on here, but there is a guy, well, I know what the link is. It's Certo 60, no, Certo 6, sorry. Certo 6 was another brand of, of folder camera. And there's a guy and I'm blanking out on his name, but uh, anyway, he makes his living refurbishing these cameras and they're not real cheap. They're a lot cheaper than a digital camera, let's just say, an SLR, a um, couple hundred bucks usually. Uh, but he does excellent work. He'll do repair work on these uh, if you ever need it. Uh, you probably will just because these are old cameras. Like I said, mine was in really good condition. I don't know if it's been serviced or not. Um, I haven't had to service it yet. Shutter speed's pretty accurate, uh, surprisingly, for a camera that is old. Um, over 70 years old, I guess, at this point. So. 
Anyway, very cool. Actually, if this is a 39, that was the year my dad was born, which is kind of cool too, because uh, you know, there's another equation you can do and it has a little little handle on the side that's kind of cool. Anyway, but uh, that's kind of you know something from the camera closet. I don't really have a formal camera closet. I have a plastic shelf thing with drawers and I keep things in there. And you know, I don't want to do a ton of them today because uh, you know I've been dared to vlog and I need more material. So we'll do some more on other days. So anyway, so a little bit about bags, a little bit about the Voigtlander Bessa. Um, cool cameras. So check it all out and I uh, hope you guys are digging this. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you want to see on here. I mean, the vlog is anything goes. It's just off the cuff. I don't really prepare for these. Literally, I'll grab one or two things like I did today and turn the camera on and go. Yesterday, I filmed everything in my car. So anyway, it's, it's sort of been the art of photography. Thanks for watching, but it's been the art of photography vlog. Subscribe if you're on YouTube and you want to uh, keep track of what's new and be informed when new episodes come out. Uh, all week we will be doing one every day. That's my challenge here. I don't know if I'll continue to do it after that because uh, it's, it's <laughs> certainly a challenge to do. Uh, but anyway, it's been kind of fun and I've enjoyed uh, you know, uh, talking to people in the comments and things like that. So anyway, once again, art of photography vlog edition. Ted Forbes, thanks for watching. We'll, uh, I'll see you tomorrow.